I'm choosing, we can wrap one because it has great social studies applications, and two um, because it's going to demonstrate all of our new pieces of the lesson sequence. Um, not all of our um, not all of the pieces I show you here are going to be available across the library. Um, it's because they're new. We're working to add it to the rest of the library. I will point them out once I get to them. I have a quick question. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm an eighth grade U.S. history teacher in the world, the nation is a crazy place right now. Do these have like age? I mean, are any of these tags like appropriate for seventh grade through twelfth grade, or appropriate first grade through fifth grade? Or fifth yeah, that's a good question. Um, we don't. Um, the only modification you can really make for that is choosing whether you do we can wrap junior versus we can wrap. Okay. So eighth grade very squarely in we can wrap. You okay. probably don't want to do we can wrap junior. We can wrap junior is good for like grades K through five. I know that's a really wide range. You definitely have to put modifications if you're on either extreme of that. Um, but the we can wrap junior is going to be a little slower. It's going to have less hard hitting news stories. Like right. we probably wouldn't do a feature on Aleppo. Uh, and we can wrap junior. Um, yeah, <laughs> nothing that's going to be like too difficult for for the younger kids. But we can wrap is definitely for secondary. Okay. Good question. Okay, so before you teach a vocabulary unit, I would recommend taking a look at the teacher's guide, which is at the bottom here. It's going to give you your grade alignment, a topic description. It'll give you your key terms. Um, note, there's a mix of Tier 2 and Tier 3 key terms here. Um, so we've got words like trafficked, enact, Tier 2, and then words like Columbia, Hurricane Matthew, those are your Tier 3 key terms. We also have standards alignment. Note, it's going to be common core, though. Um, we can't list all the state standards. It would be too unwieldy. So. Um, another good place to check before you teach a vocabulary unit is handouts. So that's just, you know, uh, two about the teacher's guide. This is where you're going to find all your printables that you'll want to um, print and copy ahead of time. Okay. So let's go ahead and watch the video. Okay, so once it gets to one of those yellow dots, it's going to pause the video and show you a quick discussion or critical thinking question. So in this case it says, why do you think our Constitution gives Congress the right to override a president's veto of a bill? So this is a discussion around the checks and balances. Um, so the idea is to help you have these moments of reflection in a video. We've gotten feedback that our videos are pretty quick. They only lightly touch on subtopics. So this gives you some structure to have those reflective discussions about the content in the video. Once you're done having your discussion, you just X out and keep going. That's a focus of the soul. It's broken. Okay. So that's the video. Um, for Weeping Rap in particular, I would recommend um, you ask students to predict the stories that are going to be featured in the Weekend Rap before you even start it, and maybe give a prize to the student who guesses the most correctly. Um, that way, students are going to be keying into current events before they even get to your class on Friday. Um, in general, videos are great, obviously, for intro and material, uh, great review for test prep, and also um, great for, oh, like, you know, if you're in the, if you're in test prep stage, um, things get, tend to get really tense and nerve-wracking for students. So this could be a great way to siphon off some of that tension and introduce some music and joy into the classroom. Following the video, we've got quick review. So this is just a quick topical check for understanding over what you just watched. So class, what landed on a comment? Satellite. What? Satellite. Satellite. Do we have a specific name for this spacecraft? Rosetta. Yes, Rosetta. The Rosetta craft. You all should know this one. What is the name of the hurricane that hit the Caribbean? Uh, yes. So there's 10 of these questions. Um, some teachers I know split their, their students up into teams, have them buzz in to make it a little competitive. Um, you can just popcorn around the room, it's however you want to use it. Lyric notes are essentially annotated lyrics. So um, if you want to learn more about a particular news story, in the case of Week in Rap, you can click on it. It'll give you a pop-up with an image, some 
standard line readings, this is just going to be a summary of the news story. And then if you click learn more, it links you to that outside news story that we pulled from for this. So this is your primary source nonfiction reading all ready for you to go. And also, this is printable. So if you hit print, it's going to take all the content from the lyric notes and put it in a Cornell note style format. Um, so this is great for interactive notebooks. It's great for um, you know, starting student research projects. Um, maybe you want to cut these into strips, give them to groups of students. They can summarize in their own words and present to each other so they're accountable to each other for their learning. Um, quick note on lyric notes. If you do utilize our online quiz, it does pull material from the lyric notes. So students will need to have um, the video and they'll also have, have read the lyric notes in order to be successful in the quiz. Just a quick note on that. Read and Respond is next, and it is a new feature, so it's not available across the library yet. Um, like Pause and Play, it's available on all new videos moving forward, and then it's available on most ELA, um, and the next subject that's going to get Read and Respond is Social Studies, so you should be seeing that by the end of the calendar year, and then we're going to go through the rest of the library to add uh, Read and Respond to those. But Essentially how it works is you've got a passage, it could be fiction or nonfiction reading passage, and then you've got a multiple choice question about the passage. So this is something that you could assign to a classroom of students, your students would log on um, and take the assignment. When they select an answer, they'll be asked to confirm the answer, and then it's immediately going to give them feedback on what, what the correct answer is and why. Um, so this is a great formative assessment tool. It's great critical reading practice. There are seven of these um, in this unit. So um, yeah, once students complete the seven questions, it's auto-graded and uploaded into your teacher platform for analysis. Next is fill in the blanks. It's exactly what it sounds like. Um, you could do this as a front of classroom, just click through the missing key terms. Or, and it's probably a more useful use case, is to open up the principal version and then just have students complete the fill in blanks as they watch the video the first time. So um, it's good listening, it's good spelling practice. The principal activity um, is your independent practice or group work or homework, however you want to use it. And I do want to spend some time on this just because the weekend rat principal activity is, in my mind, pretty robust. Um, so it's usually about five to six pages. And the principal activity is going to first include a um, vocabulary graphic organizer. And we do separate our vocabulary by tier two and tier three. So this first page, it's got Rosetta Craft, Hurricane Matthew, Columbia. This is clearly your tier three vocab terms. So um, students are instructed to summarize how this key term fits into the news in these sections here. The second page is your tier two vocab instruction. So naturally, different instructional type. We've got braced, trafficked, commend, enact. Um, students guess the meaning um, using context, and then they look up the actual meaning and then use it in a sentence. So these are the words that you may want to add to your word wall with your students. The weekend stats is a great visual literacy question. So it's usually going to be a bar graph, it could be a diagram or a timeline, and then students are going to answer questions about that, that piece that they're examining. Two truths and a lie is um, evaluating statements about the news for truth. And then the shout-out contest. So this is a writing prompt, usually a writing prompt. Sometimes it's more of a, a visual um, creative piece. But you remember that school at the beginning that was shouted out, that school in Alameda, California? So they won the shout-out contest by completing one of these prompts as a class. They submitted their work to us. We selected a winner. And then they got featured at the beginning of the weekend wrap. So it's about a month turnaround cycle. So if you complete, if your students complete this and you win, you probably finish it in November weekend wrap. 
Um, but I highly, highly encourage you to enter into these contests. Um, it's great attention for your kids. They get really excited about that when they see, it's kind of like seeing yourself on TV. Um, and the prompts are usually, you know, pretty uh, robust. So in this We Can Wrap a shout out contest prompt, we have um, Hurricane Matthew taking a look at the path of Hurricane Matthew, looking at the weather prediction for a particular location, and then writing a weather forecast wrap about that particular location. And that is the principal activity. Next up is the quiz. So this is like read and respond, it's an assignable, and it's 10 multiple choice questions. So you would assign this to a classroom, you would go through and complete it, it's auto graded, uploaded to your teacher platform for analysis. Note this is available across the library. We did have this last year, so some of you may have used it already. Um, but it's a great formative assessment, um, and like I said, it's available for all of our units. So. And then the last piece I want to show you is Lyric Lab. So this is an extension activity that you would do after students have already demonstrated a lot of mastery over the material in terms of knowledge of the key terms, knowledge of the stories. What this is, is an opportunity for students to write their own rhymes using content from the video. So they're kind of doing a remix of our lyrics. So how it works is you've got key terms over here, You've got a rhyme generator here, and you've got a beats player here. Students can write their rhyme here. So I'll show you an example. People in Florida braced for a hurricane. Okay, a couple things to note. I just wrote my first line. I used one of my key terms, braced. It crossed it off the list for me, and it highlighted in the text. And then it gave me some example rhymes for words to write with hurricane. So I've got strain, vein, train, contain, ascertain. Um, so I'm just going to choose one of those words I think I can rhyme my second line with. Let's say strain. People in Haiti are already feeling the strain. All right, so I've written a couplet. Um, I've demonstrated deep understanding of a story that was covered in the weekend route by putting it in my own words and putting it also in a rhyme, demonstrating the rhyming ability. If there's a word that comes up in my rhyming box over here that I don't know, I can say I don't know what ascertain means. I can type it in the box. I can highlight it. And I can do this with any of the words. It'll give me rhymes, slant rhymes. It will also give me a definition. So this is a nice little piece if you have you know, independent learners who want to expand their vocabulary based off of words they see in the rhyme box. This is an easy way for them to do that. The beats box down here, these are just vocabulary beats. Um, we've just taken out the lyrics. So they can choose their favorite beat. And so this might be nice for you to play during um, group writing time, or um, if a student actually wants to practice performing their rhymes, they've got the piece there. And this is actually something you can assign to students. So you can assign this to a classroom. You can let them know, hey, I'd like you to use all 11 key terms in 10 couplets. They'll write out their couplets. And then um, if we were in the student view, they'd have an option to save. You can save drafts when they're ready to submit it to you. They hit submit, and then it shows up in your teacher platform for evaluation. 